Hello guys, it's Rob with Tech. So today I want to show you this uh, plugin that there is. It's a KVM. So if you try and install it, uh, you're going to realize that there is an error message with this. And the reason that is happening is because we need to enable uh, backport. So if you go here on systems and OMV extras, you can go ahead and click enable backports. And what this is going to do is going to allow you to get uh, different repositories where you can use this, this, uh, a program and the reason that this happens also is because the program is meant to run on a newer version of debian and basically when you enable backports is that you're going to use the repositories uh they actually made the newer program run on, on whatever the the release is on open media vault so now that that finished we're just going to go to plugins and then you're going to go to kvm uh, KVM, what it is, is actually you can virtualize uh, operating systems within your Open Media Vault instance. Um, in this case, like sometimes I know a lot of my videos they show Docker Compose, uh, but in in some cases th those Compose uh, Docker containers can be quite limiting. Uh, but in case that you want, you have something very specific. In this case, we can use this KVM plugin to install that operating system and install whatever we need on it but you don't have to uh get another box or anything you can do it all within open media vault uh, and that's what i'm going to show you in this demo so while this is finishing i already have set up a uh, a network drive let me make this better here it is so if we just do if you do backslash backslash and then the ip address of your server uh, you go ahead you're gonna go ahead and hit your uh smb share in this case this is the one that i set up data um if you don't know how to set this up i have other videos going in depth on how to do the the setups for the open media vault but this one is more like uh, on based on the kvm uh, configuration so in this case the data this is my data folder i'm going to go ahead and create a folder in here and i'm going to call it vm storage in that VM storage, I'm going to go ahead and create another folder and call it ISOs. So now I have that completed. This just finished. And basically what this does is here in services, you're going to go ahead and get to KVM. And here's going to, you're going to be able to create VMs. Before you do that, you first have to set up the pools. So in this case, I had already set it up, but I'll go ahead and delete them just so I can show you how to create them. So if you do add a new pool name, I'm just going to go ahead and call it the same as I labeled it earlier. Now here on the path, you're just going to go ahead and browse directory. And I know mine is the SRV and dev disk and then data. And then you're going to find VM storage. I'm going to choose that add. And then I'm going to go ahead and create another one. And this is going to be called ISOs. Now I'm going to do in the directory. I'm going to do the same thing. SRV. This is depends where you want to put the uh, specify where the ISOs. I just put mine together with uh, the VM storage here in ISOs. So I'll go ahead and add that. Now we have, you have to go ahead and, and uh, click on this button with the arrow and do start. And you're going to do that for both. Another thing is here in the iso this is where you put you're going to put all your isos so i'm just going to go ahead and, and transfer this ubuntu image that i have yeah so the speed slows down because i start copying from my desktop into this virtualized environment so there's like a performance thing there so now we have it in here now that's set up um if you're wondering where I got the this SRV path, is because if you go to storage and you do share folders, here's where I have all my folders set up. Uh, here's the path that I, that you were seeing. But in like I was saying, I have another video that goes in depth with that. Um, so just watch my other video. In this case, uh, we're doing the KVM. Before you do that, also depends how you're gonna do your network. This is just an a default network that was created with this KVM instances. If you want to run a, an isolated app, well, this is fine. But I want to go ahead and, and, and put those VMs that I create on my home network. So I want my DHB server to give an IP address. So I'm just going to do a add a MacTab network. And here I'm just going to create, I'm going to call it bridge. You can call it 
whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to use this one because this is the Ethernet that I'm currently using for this system. Now, don't forget that you need to go ahead and select it and go ahead and bring it up. Okay, so that's active already. So that's all we're going to do. If you go here to ISOs, you can now see our Ubuntu images right here. So now you're going to go to VMs and then add a new VM. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the advanced options. Because this system is virtualized, it doesn't support the host pass through. Um, so in my case, you, you might not need to change this, but in case that you don't have the, 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 uh, what's it called? The IT, I think it's a VT, uh, virtualization enabled in the BIOS. You might have to change this setting. So that's the reason why I'm changing this. So I'm just going to do as well as fine. Now this is in Ubuntu. So I'm just going to go down. I know I'm using the 2204. LTS. Now here's if you want the UAFI or, or not. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as BIOS. Now CPU cores. How many cores do you want to give it? I mean, if, if like in this case, I know this is like a Linux. A uh, one core is fine. I'm gonna do memory. I'm gonna do 1.5. They think that if you run, you can run less than 750 on the Ubuntu server because it'll crash. Now this is the, if you want to use VNC or Spice whenever you connect to um, the console, uh, you can leave both. I'm just going to leave VNC on a Merc value. So let me change this to megabytes and then I can do the 1500. Now here is the size of the disk. You want to go ahead and give it enough size. So in this case, I'm going to do eight gigabytes. I mean, this is just an example. You, you should do more. On the, on the pool, make sure you select VM storage or wh wherever you want to put specify where you want that file located. Name, I'm not going to put anything because it's just going to copy the name. Why well, didn't specify the name? So I'm just going to do Ubuntu server demo. So it's going to use the VM name here. So if you leave it blank. Now, optical drive, here's you're going to see all the ISOs that you put into the VM storage or into the ISO folder. So I'm just going to select this one that we have here. Now here in the network, I'm going to go ahead and select my bridge network because I wanted to access the, my network physically. I'll go ahead and save. Okay. So on that error, I'm just going ahead and change the, the drive so smaller. The problem was that I didn't have enough space since this is a demo machine. It wasn't taking the eight gigabytes. So I changed it to seven. Um, so once you have it here, you're just going to go ahead and click start, uh, the power button, then start. Now, in order for you to get access to the console, you just highlight it and you click on this little computer screen. You're going to do a start. Now here you have to pretend like you're modifying this. Like in this one, I'm going to remove the one and then put the one back and then start. This gives you access to the start. Now here is the link. You click on that and it will open up. Um, the console for it so i'm just gonna go and do the first option now i'm not gonna go over how to install ubuntu server but you get the idea in case that you need to install uh alpine linux ubuntu fedora or whatever the case may be uh this would be the option for you to take in, in this case right so this is all for this tutorial i just wanted to show you about this kvm option i mean there's more stuff in here if you need to add uh, more hardest optical drives and all that stuff um it's a little it's it's kind of basic but if you're just trying to run full operating system virtualized i mean this could be a good option um so it's already finishing up here i mean you have to go to the whole installer um this is currently i'm running on my main box So this is my main box. So if you go to I go to service and KVM, I have a total of four VMs. Uh, I only have two running right now, but there were like experiments, right? So that's why they're all at 10 gigabyte on the hard disk. Um, but I'm actually in this Fedora instance, I, I have a GUI on it. All this ones are command line. They don't have a GUI. Um, but I noticed that this server can handle that workload and it also puts a lot of strain on on my ram considering i only have 16 gigs of ram 
so i went ahead and bought an, another virtualization server so um, for the oncoming videos that i have i'm going to go ahead and see if i could migrate this over i still haven't decided if i'm going to use xcpng or if i'm going to use proxmox so maybe drop it in the comments right and what are your opinions on that and see what i should install well thank you guys if you sticked around if you, if you have any other questions please let me know thank you